G'day knuckleheads, Uncle Knackers here, and welcome to episode 36 of my Owner Builder series. Now, I've been looking forward to this, and that's installing the timber flooring. I was going to do it myself, but after hearing a few horror stories about excessive timber movement in these humid conditions, which is where I live, I've decided to go with the professionals, which I think will pay off in the long run. And here is the flooring. The species is black butt, which is an extremely durable hardwood, and the size is 130 by 19. And these are the timber battens, which are secured to the slab, and the flooring is attached to those battens. Now some guys or some floor installers like to direct stick the flooring to the slab just using glue. Personally, I like to put a batten down first because that creates a layer of air between the top of the slab and the underside of the flooring. So there's a bit of air circulation or ventilation which is always a good thing. Now what's happening here is there's holes being drilled through the batten and into the slab and then some anchors are hammered in which secure the batten to the concrete slab. It's a really good system. Now with any flooring project the most critical board is that first one. You have to get it down straight and using a string line helps you guide you through that process. Now like I said before Timber flooring will expand when there's moisture in the air. That's why it's very important that around the perimeter of the room that you're doing, that you have at least a 10 millimeter gap between the drywall and the edge of that perimeter board. Make sure you do it, and that way you'll minimize any potential dramas that may occur down the track due to those floorboards expanding. And look at these guys go, they are on fire. And just in case you're wondering about that nail gun, it's called a secret nailer. And all you have to do is hit the top of it with a rubber mallet, which in turn drives a staple just above the tongue on the floorboard and into the timber batten, which secures it nice and tightly. Now the good thing, what, what was that? That totally threw me. And the good thing about this system is that there are no visible fixings, so you don't need to go back later and punch and fill any of those holes, which is a real time saver. And this is all you have to do is hit the top and that drives in the staple. Too easy. Now the guys are just finishing off here with the hallway. Got a bedroom to go and we are done. Love it. So as you can see from the video, what the boys do to secure these hardwood battens down to the timber slab is that first of all they run a bead of glue down the back edge of each of these boards. And the glue that they use is this stuff here called Ultraset. If you can get your hands on it, do it because it's absolutely amazing. And once the board's glued and placed down on top of the slab, they drill a series of holes into that board every 500 millimeters or so. Into those holes, they insert these anchors called splits anchors, S-P-L-I-T-Z. Once they get driven into the board and the glue dries, to remove this batten from that concrete slab, you'll be leaving timber on the concrete slab. It is that good a system. So one thing to remember when laying into the floor is that you need to have a gap between the edge of your last board and the plasterboard or drywall. And the gap has to be at least 10 millimeters. And the reason for that is that in moist conditions, your boards do expand. And if there's no expansion joint there, the boards will eventually hit up against that wall and I have nowhere to go but to force the rest of the boards to come up and you don't want that to happen. And don't worry about that gap because your skirting board or your baseboard will cover it. So that rule for the expansion joint also applies for areas where you might have a big run of boards. And around here, the rule is for every six meters of board, you need at least 10 mil worth of expansion joint, 
which is what I have right here. This is the end of my six meter run. Once the floor gets sanded, this gap is filled with a flexible filler. And it's good to put it in a spot where you're not going to notice it. I've got some double doors going here, so you won't notice it that much at all. But the main thing is, is that you do it. So that's it folks, the floor is done. And just between you and I, I can't wait to show you how it turned out after it was sanded and polished. Mwah! It turned out beautiful, but you'll just have to be a little bit patient for that video to come out. Now, I've also sanded the old floor in the old part of the house, and the contrast between the two is fantastic. With the flooring down, I can now get stuck into the fit out or the fix out, so I hope you can stick around to see how it all comes together. And as per usual, I hope you enjoyed and found that video useful. And don't forget, a big thumbs up is always greatly appreciated. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button for more handy tips. <sighs> Floor's down, video's done. Must be time for a cup of tea. So till next time, I'm out of here. Cheers.